Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is story time I guess or Jason reading books yeah so the idea is I read a book or part of a book and you can just fall asleep whilst I read the book to you and I'm only going to be reading out of copyright books because they're free for everybody to read you know in videos and audios and podcasts and stuff like that so I got this um, book from read.gov and uh I thought I'd just choose something that was suitable for the whole family. Something that would give you a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. I could just swallow the felt carpet or something, I don't know. And for the family to enjoy. So today I'm going to be reading The Exorcist. And I hope you enjoy. <laughs> now today I'm going to read The Three Bears. by Stensrows, Three Bears, W. W. Denslow, rather, 1903, August it was published, and it was uh, illustrated, uh, Oh yeah, adapted and illustrated by W. W. Denslow. Oh, so he wrote it and did he? Really? Oh, okay, that's good. So basically, this is the visual version. So it's actually got pictures. And I'm reading it on my iPad. And it's online. So uh, that's that's interesting. It's published in uh, New York. By G.W. Dillingham Co. Hmm. Uh, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and there may be background sounds but I imagine the the excitement of my voice will very much distract you from any of that stuff Now, the cover of the book has got three bears, <laughs> three bears, and a little girl. And there's a little bear, looks like it's holding hands with the little girl. That's going to 
be a weird baby. Anyway, and there's two adults from the look of it. And one of the adult bears is holding a walking stick. And the other bear has got their arms crossed. As if to say, I told you so. I'm not quite sure what the argument was about, but... Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very realistic scenario. And... I think this is the back cover. It shows... And it's got a little bear holding up a piece of paper saying to Maisie Lashelly. She'll be dead. Nineteen oh three. Yeah, long gone. So the three bears, here's the, I mean, I've never seen a bear. No, no, actually I did see a bear once. It was at the zoo and it didn't have a walking stick. Also, when I was in Bulgaria, I didn't see a bear there, although I, I'm not really going to list all the different places that I haven't seen a bear, because that would just be silly. But I was told when I went to Bulgaria in 2002 that they had a large population of bears. Yeah. And I remember once we were on the ski um, traveling thing. You know those, those seats that go all the way across the mountain but are connected to uh, a metal wire that's been there since probably the First World War. Yeah, felt safe. Oh. And uh, the thing broke down. The, all of the, the chairs just stopped. And I was really concerned because down below me was the, like the forest area covered in snow is handy for skiing I guess uh, we definitely went at the right time of the year and I was thinking oh there might be bears down there hope I don't slip and my friend who I shared a room with in the hotel, he was annoying me a little bit. Uh, I thought, you know, just a little push. Just a little push and he'll be gone. I get a good night's sleep, but then I remembered that he owed me £10. So, plus he was my friend. Well, 
I'm still there. I'm still actually in that chair. I'm waiting to be rescued. So 18 years later, you should see my beard now. So the three bears, <clears throat> the three bears, here we go. And it's got three bears dancing. Look like they're dancing, but almost looks like they're controlling invisible string puppets. Or they're being controlled by a, an invisible string puppeteer. And the little girl looks like she's, she's pulling a dress up. What a tease. She's teasing the, the little bear. A lot of flirting going on in this. I thought this was a children's book. So, here we go. A long time ago, in a cottage on the edge of a great forest there dwelt a little girl by the name of Golden Hair. Really? Is that really her name? Golden Hair? I mean a lot, a lot of people don't even have the same colour hair when they get older as they do when they're born. I, mean, I was blonde when I was born. What if I'd have been called blonde hair? Blonde pubes or something, you know? And, but you've got dark hair. Well, that is getting lighter. Grayer, a bit by bit by bit by bit. So she didn't live in the forest. She dwelt. I'm not quite sure what that is. The edge of a great forest there dwelt a little girl. Is that a bit like dribbling? I don't know. Anyway, her name was Golden Hair. She was an orphan and lived with her grandmother, who loved her dearly, dearly. The parents were eaten by bears, I'm, I'm just guessing. Or died of porridge poisoning. The grandmother was very old, unlike most grandmothers. And so most of the household work was done by golden hair but she was so young and strong she did not mind that a bit for she had plenty of time to play and was merry the whole day long she'd be put on uh, medication wouldn't she now that's yeah, ADHD Although little golden hair lived far from other children, she was never lonesome, never lonesome, for she had many friends and playmates in the wild creatures of the wood. The gentle, soft-eyed deer would feed from her hand. I didn't know deers liked eating hands. And the wild birds would come at her musical call. For she knew their language and they and loved them well. Didn't just love them, she loved them well. 
who's really good at loving them. Perfect, in fact. Golden hair had never wandered far into the forest, but one day, in the early autumn time, a bit vague, as she was gathering bright leaves and golden rod. Where are you going? Where are you going, sweetheart? Oh, grandmother, I'm just going out to collect some leaves and a golden rod. What's a, what is that? What is it? She strayed further. No, not further, farther. Then she knew and came upon a lonely grey cabin under the mighty trees. A slab of wood beside the half-open door told who lived within. It read, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and the Tiny Bear. So this is where the jolly bears live, said Golden Hair, as she knocked upon the door. I want to meet them. No answer came to her knocking, so she pushed the door wide open and walked in. A bit rude. It's just walking in, isn't it? If there's no answer, then you come back. Maybe leave a message and just walk in. Walsing in like that. What's your name? Matilda. Walsing Matilda. <laughs> it was a most disorderly house. Now she's judging the state of the house. They've not invited her in. How do they, how does she know? She, they might be in the middle of doing, you know, some renovations or, you know, moving stuff around. I'm not really warming to her, if I'm honest. Anyway, it was a most disorderly house, but a bright fire burned on the hearth. Hearth. I have to look that word up as well. Over which hung a big black kettle of bubbling soup. I normally just boil water in my kettle. Never thought about boiling soup. I'm not sure how that would go with a coffee. While on the table nearby... Well, it's not going to be a long way away, is it? It's a small cabin. We already established that. Not like, oh, there's a table. Yeah, but it's uh, two miles away. No, it's, it's nearby, isn't it? Were three yellow bowls of different sizes. So lucky she had a tape measure. A big bowl. Oh no, sorry. A big bowl for Papa Bear. A medium sized bowl for Mama Bear. And a little bowl for the tiny bear. Said Golden Hair. who would have preferred to be called Goldilocks, but unfortunately that name was already taken and copyrighted. That soup smells good. She went on to say, But my, what an untidy house. I'll put the place to rights while I am waiting for the bears to come home.
I, mean, I imagine there's, you know, she's coming from a good place. Wants to do something nice. But you can imagine coming home to a complete stranger that you've never met. Vacuuming and cleaning the toilet. I don't mean vacuuming the toilet. I'm, I'm saying, you know, doing housework. Just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. I don't mean to judge, I'm just, just, I'm just letting you know how I feel. So she went to work to sweep and dust and soon had the room in order. Then she went into the bedroom and made up the three beds. The big one for Papa Bear. The medium-sized one for Mama Bear. And a little, wicker wicker one for the tiny bear. She bustled and had everything as neat as a pin. I've never ever looked at a pin or trod on a pin and picked it up and said, Oh, that's neat. Neat as a pin. When in bounced the three jolly bears. For a moment, the bears stood speechless with wide open eyes, staring at Golden Hair, who stood like a ray of sunshine in the dusky room. Yeah, I bet they were thinking, who the hell are you? You doing in our home? This is my, this is my manor. What are you doing? Get out. Who invited you anyway? Then they burst into loud laughter. <laughs> and made her welcome to their home. When they saw how nice and clean it was, they thanked her heartily. And an and an ice cream van pulled up. Right outside the cabin. And the little baby bear said, Mummy and Daddy, can we have some ice cream, please? And here's the mummy, mama bear said, no, you can't. You're lactose intolerant. And Papa Bear said, Well, well, well but you, you uh, perhaps you could just have an ice lolly, you know, just one of those strawberry ones that doesn't have any ice cream in. Mm, mm, well, what do, you, what do you think, Mama Bear? Do you think that's a possibility? Mm. Go on, let little, 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 little baby bear have, have, have something nice and cold to suck on. Go on. Mm. Hey. Golden hair said. How come you've all got different accents? And baby, little baby bear said. I don't know what you're talking about. And Golden Hair said, you, you didn't sound like that last time either. You keep changing the way you're talking. Papa Bear said, Oh, stop saying that. We're not talking differently at all. It's just, this is how we always talk. Mama Bear said, Why you keep messing with us? What's your problem, man? What's your problem? Why you keep messing? You're coming to my house. You just, you start messing with things, moving stuff around. And then you start insulting the way we talk. Gold, golden hair said, oh. So, sorry about that. I didn't mean to. And... Then she spent the rest of the day with the three jolly bears playing high spy 
and many new gains which the bears taught her. And underneath at the end of this, pic this page is a picture of a bear and an elderly lady. Oh. Right, here we go. <clears throat> when the afternoon sun was sinking in the west, the little girl said she must be getting home, for her grandma would be anxious about her. The three bears would not let her go alone. So they all set off together through the twilight woods. You have entered the twilight woods. Doo -doo 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 -doo. A merry company. Golden hair rode upon the broad back of Papa Bear, while Mama Bear and Tiny walked gaily on Eva's either side. In this way, before night had fallen, they came clear of the wood and up to the home of Golden Hair. To be sure the grandmother was much surprised. Oh, to be sure the grandmother was much surprised to see this shaggy company with her little golden hair. But when she saw how jolly they all were and how handy they were in helping golden hair get the supper, she was delighted to have them stay and gave them a welcome. She gave them a welcome. Papa Bear split the wood, brought it in and built the fire. Mama Bear got the tea kettle and filled it with water that was carried from the well by the tiny bear and soon they were able to sit down to a good supper of hot biscuit, wild honey, pumpkin pie with tea for the elders and nice sweet milk for golden hair and the tiny bear. There's a picture of uh, one of the bears still holding a walking stick for some reason. The grandmother liked the three bears so well and the bears were so delighted with the comforts of home that they all decided to live together for the general good. Quite fast moving this, isn't it? Uh, Papa Bear would do the chores and stand guard over the house at night. Mama Bear would do the housework under the directions of Golden Hair. Wow. The tiny bear would wait upon grandmother and run errands for the household. So basically they just used the bears as servants. Unpaid. And there's a name for that, isn't it? And so it came about that the three bears moved their three bowls and their three beds to the home of Golden Hair and her grandmother. The very next day, oh, 
the very next day, and from all accounts they were happy ever after. But there's more. Oh, so much more. At any rate, the fame of golden hair and the three bears spread far and wide through all the country side, so that on holidays, troops of children came to play with the four jolly friends. The good-natured bears were always anxious to please the children. They would get up to games under the greenwood trees in the summer and merry sports upon the ice lake or snowy hills in winter. They did their best to make life for all one glad round of joy. Just how long they lived thus, no one seems to know, for it was a long, long time ago, and nothing is left but a joyous memory of happy golden times. And it probably didn't really happen. The end.